Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. New details have emerged about an alleged bomb threat in Monroe that police say was made by a Moses Lake man. The U.S. House of Representatives voted yesterday 352 to 65 to outlaw the popular social media platform TikTok if its Chinese ownership does not give up control of the app to another buyer. Unseasonably warm out there today and getting warmer. I'll tell you about possible record-setting high temperatures temperatures by this weekend. It's all coming up in weather. Wenatchee police say they'll seek criminal charges against a Wenatchee woman who allegedly attacked a family member yet Wednesday and held officers at bay with threats of self-harm. Police Captain Brian Chance says the incident began about 4.18 p.m. at a home in the 400 block of North Franklin Avenue, where the 45-year-old suspect allegedly attacked and threatened her adult daughter. When police arrived, Chance says the woman armed herself with a pair of scissors locked herself in an upstairs bathroom and threatened to take her own life. About 7.38 p.m., when SWAT team members broke the bathroom window to gain a view into the room, the suspect exited and was taken into custody. Her daughter was treated for minor injuries. The woman had not been booked into the Chelan County Jail as of the, uh, today, although Chance said police will seek charges of felony harassment, fourth-degree assault, and resisting arrest. The Wenatchee Valley Fire Department is weighing whether to institute a charge for fire protection that wouldn't be tied to property tax, but instead based on the size and kind of structure being protected. Fire Chief Brian Brett presented the proposal to commissioners on Wednesday for what's called a fire benefit charge. The fire department serves the entire Wenatchee and East Wenatchee metropolitan area. Brett says the charge would effectively lower the agency's dependency on property tax, dropping its tax rate from $1.50 per $1,000 of property value down to $1 per $1,000. The fire benefit charge has us give up that top 50 cents and it lowers the property tax to the new base of $1 for everybody across the jurisdiction. And if you don't have burnable structures on your property, for example, the orchard, the wheat field, although they burn, their property tax goes to $1 because this is based on square footage of burnable property where black people inhabit and lives are at risk. You can look for our full conversation with Chief Brett about the fire benefit charge on tomorrow's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Supporters of Columbia Elementary School are expressing their frustration with the Wenatchee School District over the interpretation services offered at board meetings. Community members have shared during public comment that they feel the services have been inadequate for those who have tried to give testimony in Spanish. It is truly sad to see that our monolingual community members and part of the Columbia family continue to be disrespected. Growing up at 12, 13, 14 years old, I watch how embarrassed my parents would be to ask for help to be interpreted, translated. They felt voiceless and powerless to not be able to communicate due to language shaming, lack of access to English classes, and thinking they weren't smart enough to learn English at 50 years old. We should not continue to do this. This is a civil rights issue as well as due process of respect, language inclusion, and a sense of belonging that we speak of. The district is sending the wrong message to parents who have come to these meetings in person and they have felt as if, as if they didn't belong. Languages matter, communication matters, and is key to empower children so their voices are heard. Wenatchee School District has recently partnered with CAFE to provide a certified translator rather than a district staffer to help interpret for Spanish speakers who wish to give testimony. Board member Maria Iniguez spoke up about the comments and shared thoughts on how the district can better reach Spanish-speaking families. Can we use our family advocates to reach out to 
all families in general, um, and maybe um, start with our Spanish-speaking families, invite them to our public hearing, invite them to our board meetings. Um, we have a platform that we are providing. Uh, we just got to get them here. Um, so how can we as a district um, work together to, to inform them of what's already happening and have them join our meetings? I do appreciate the district for providing, uh, having these services available. It's just how do we leverage on what we're already providing. New details about an alleged bomb threat in Monroe that police say was made by a Moses Lake man. Snohomish County court records say on March 4th, Ryan Samuel Palmer texted the National Human Trafficking Hotline pretending to be a seven-year-old child and reported a van full of explosive material in a supermarket parking lot. Palmer, who's 44 years old, was arrested at the scene after police cleared the area around Highway 2 in the Monroe Commercial Center. Investigators say there was no child with him and no explosives were found. Five years ago, Palmer was caught with bomb-making materials during a Moses Lake traffic stop and pleaded guilty to burglary and bomb threats. He remains held in the Snohomish County Jail on $50,000 bond. When we come back, the Chelan County Sheriff's Office has received funding to begin a body-worn camera program, and Link Transit's Board of Directors may decide next week on whether to send its sales and use tax back to the voters five years after it was created by a ballot initiative. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Mount Stewart Physical Therapy is all new. New staff, new therapists, and a fabulous new chiropractor. That's right, you do not need to drive to Wenatchee or Cashmere for your care. Come see Dr. Zolman, DC. No referral needed for most insurances. Open your auto and work injury claims with us or fax your post-op and Medicare therapy prescriptions to us right here in town. We offer covered pelvic floor services. We are premium health care for the Upper Valley. Improve your quality of life today. Mount Stewart Integrative Therapy and Chiropractic. Let Mary Maid's custom cleaning experts help you clean up your to-do list. Between work, kids, and pets, it's hard to find time to keep up. Let Mary Maid's of Wenatchee help. Mary Maid's cleaning experts can help keep your home or business fresh, neat, and exactly how you'd clean it, if only you had the time. Call now for a free estimate, 509-663-1710. Serving Chelan and Douglas counties, Mary Maid's, let us help. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents the magic of Manson. Spring is here at the Chelan Ridge Winery. Check out the all new deck area, enjoy an amazing view, new vintage wines, and that down home hospitality Chelan Ridge is famous for. Wine Girl Wines is already famous for wine, beer, and great entertainment. And now they have added craft cocktails to the list of food and drink. So pop on by our Manson location for some good old fashioned fun. The U.S. House of Representatives voted yesterday 352 to 65 to outlaw the popular social media platform TikTok if its Chinese ownership does not give up control of the app to another buyer. 8th District Congresswoman Krim Schreier voted for the bill both in the full house and in the Energy and Commerce Committee. Like other proponents, she told NCW Life News that as it currently exists, TikTok poses a national security risk. Today's vote was 100% about protecting our national security. It's about protecting our population's data, and it is protecting us from malign interference, either from propaganda or interference with elections. Uh, you know, there's lots of theoreticals. That does not mean I don't have general concerns about social media and its impact on children in particular. But that is a separate issue that I think needs to be taken up uh, separately and with regard to every social media company. A lot of people have found a lot of uh, freedom of expression on TikTok. 
were you uh did you have any difficulty squaring the the kind of first amendment concerns that a bill like this might raise no not at all this bill is about having tiktok owned by an allied country or by a u.s interest and you know the the platform continues and it is highly likely that people won't even sense an interruption other than perhaps not having information manipulated or seeing propaganda. Um, but the user experience will continue. And I really cannot imagine that they would not opt to sell a company worth tens of billions of dollars. I just don't know what business sense that would make for TikTok. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office has received funding to begin a body-worn camera program. The funding was secured by Representative Kim Schreier after she requested it be included in a community project funding bill signed into law by President Joe Biden on March 9th. The Sheriff's Office was awarded $660,000 in total to purchase equipment, accessories, data management, and implement the initial program. Out of all the regional law enforcement agencies, the Sheriff's Office is currently the only one without body cameras. Sheriff Mike Morrison said he applied for the funding in the beginning of 2023, and he told NCW Life News that he thinks the body cams will help them be more transparent with the community they serve. Link Transit's Board of Directors may decide next week on whether to send its sales and use tax back to the voters five years after it was created by a ballot initiative. That two-tenths of one percent tax provides about six million dollars of the total 59 million dollar budget for the regional bus service. Voters in Chelan and Douglas counties approved the tax in 2019 by a combined vote of 53.7 percent. But some elected officials who make up the board, including Douglas County Commissioner Kyle Steinberg and Rock Island Mayor Randy Agnew said Link hasn't achieved its goals of expanded services and voters should be asked to approve or deny the tax a second time. Overturning the tax could make Link ineligible for about $3.5 million in outside transportation grants. The board tabled the question last July, but it's now back on their agenda for the next public meeting scheduled at 3 p.m. Tuesday at the Columbia Station bus terminal. When we come back, we will bring you our weekly Pause for Pets feature with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society when we will introduce you to a handsome dog named Apollo. Get ready for a dose of early spring as temperatures this weekend soar to around 70 degrees. I'll have all the details coming up in your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. It's cold outside and time to make sure your loved ones are safe and secure at home during the cold months ahead. Aging in Adult Care has low-cost in-home care options for seniors, adults with disabilities, and for caregivers assisting relatives or friends. Services like housekeeping, personal care, and home-delivered meals can make such a difference for you or someone you know. These services and more are available by calling Aging in Adult Care's offices at 1-800-572-4459. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. It's time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Today's featured pet is a five-year-old German Shepherd mix who desperately wants a home. He's full of love that'll take you to the moon. Meet Apollo. 
Paws for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Hi, I'm Corley with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, <laughs> animal care manager here. And this big, beautiful boy is Apollo. Um, he is our five-year-old shepherd, German shepherd. And he is just such a wonderful, wonderful dog. We've had him far too long. Uh, I wanna say two months now, which is absolutely ridiculous because he is the best boy. Apollo is very smart. He responds instantly to um, sit and down and stay. And he's just so well-mannered, gives great eye contact. He, um, he wants to do whatever you want him to do. He just wants to spend time with you. Um, we also know that he's great with kids. We've had a few meet and greets here with him and families with um, small kids and teenagers. And he's just, he's just like this. He just hangs out and he's interested, but he's so sweet. He's also very playful. <laughs> he loves the stuffed animals and he, he loves fetch and he will actually bring the ball back and drop it for you. He's a beautiful, good, all-round boy. Um, as usual, uh, we don't know how he is with cats because he came to us as a stray, so we don't have any you know, owner surrender information or anything like that. But we do know that he gets along with some of our dogs here. He can be selective, um, but when he makes a dog friend, they are best friends. <laughs> um, and we do, of course, always encourage uh, you to bring your own dog here, if you have one, to meet our dogs, because that's important too. Everybody in the family should get along. Staff members here too have been taking uh, Apollo into their office lately. We've been doing this little office foster thing here where we can, and Apollo has been their favorite. <laughs> he just, uh, I've been told that he just kind of lays there and hangs out and um, is just very chill with them, just spends all day just by their desk. So if you would like to come meet Apollo, we are open at 11 till 6, Thursday through Tuesday, and he would love to meet you. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Paws for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Thursday. Boy, you could feel that warm up out there today and mainly because of all the blue skies that we had around North Central Washington today. Beautiful shot from our Billy Goat SkyFi Tower camera and you can see Pateras in the lower left part of your screen, Brewster just up to the north of there, and it was nice all around north central Washington today. 57 degrees, our unofficial high temperature, 5 degrees above where we should be at 52 for this time of year. Our record, 70, and that was set back in 2015. 30 this morning, and just a touch below where we should be for normal overnight lows. 33 is normal. 22, our record cold, and that was set in 1969. Sun came up for us this morning at 714 and we'll set tonight at 706. All right, let's take a look at those temperatures for tomorrow and wow, 60s all over our map. 64 for Moses Lake and Afreda, around 63 for Quincy and then 62s from Ellensburg through Wenatchee all the way up into Chelan. 60 in Leavenworth, the cool spot if you can call it that tomorrow. Lake Wenatchee with a high temperature of 57. All right, let's take a look at our surface loop and tonight we expect mostly clear skies area of high pressure just off our northwest coast and look at all the clear skies will be mild tonight with low temperatures mainly in those upper 30s getting into Friday and folks this
Texas forecast isn't going to change much. Sunny and warmer to end our work week. We will see high temperatures tomorrow, as we talked about, into those low 60s generally and just nice all up and down the West Coast. For Saturday, sunny and even a little bit warmer, and that trend will continue through our weekend. We're talking highs on Saturday in the upper 60s. Hopefully, you have a chance to get outside, maybe do some yard work either Saturday or Sunday because we are approaching 70 degrees as we get into the end of the weekend. All kinds of sunshine around Washington State. Monday, unseasonably warm temperatures continue with sunshine to begin our next work week. Once again, we're talking temperatures around 70 degrees. And by the way, Sunday and Monday, Tuesday high uh, record highs are right around 70. So we will be knocking at the doorstep here as we get into the end of the weekend. First day of spring coming up on Tuesday and it'll feel more like mid spring, mostly sunny skies, low 70s for high temperatures on Tuesday. And then we'll come back down to earth a little bit as we get to the end of our forecast, partly cloudy skies, just a bit of a trough will begin to form and that'll bring us some rain showers late next week. But enjoy Wednesday too with high temperatures in those upper 60s. All right, let's take a look at that seven day forecast 38 overnight tonight and then we just slowly warm up as we get you into the upcoming weekend 62 tomorrow 68 Saturday 69 for Sunday and our warmest days now look to be Monday and Tuesday, sunny skies both days, 70 on Monday, 71 Tuesday, partly cloudy on Wednesday with a high temperature then of 68 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Happy Thursday to you. The Eastern Washington Eagles women's basketball team is headed to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1987. How about that? Eastern came from behind to beat Northern Arizona in the Big Sky Tournament Championship in Boise yesterday. Final 73-64. Seen a team that is clearly just won every game by a, a huge margin and Eastern Washington has really relied on that poise down the stretch. Keeping the floor spread. Buckley got it. We got a tie ball game. Loetta trying to get around Naya Moran and she will and she'll get a chance at a three point play. She's so crafty. The nice dribble penetration to the basket had growing up in Haver, Montana. Just north of where I grew up and Loetta count it in a foul. Just send the Buckley is coming to life. She can just sense on that ball reversal. Such a prolific minute to go. One minute to go. Got it! Just a huge... Martin. And Eastern Washington is your Big Sky Tournament champion. Moses Lake's Jamie Loera was key in leading the Eagles to the comeback victory. She finished with 11 points, 5 assists, and giddy about going to the big dance.
Congratulations to the Eastern Washington Eagles on winning the Big Sky Tournament. Well, let's stick with basketball. The Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tournament began yesterday in Las Vegas. Was Washington bowing out to USC 80-74 and emotional? Mike Hopkins met with reporters afterwards as his seven-year run with the Huskies came to an end. But great places aren't made by having and being around great people. And I've been very lucky in my seven years at the University of Washington. Very blessed. He decided to come back. It's all about the people. Places are just places. Great people make great places. And we have great people. And the, the program, the athletic program that, that Jen Cohen helped build, the culture, the coaches all backing each other, really, really special to be a part of that. She gave me a chance. Wish I had some more wins and losses, or more wins, less losses. But I'm really proud of getting through COVID, um, you know, getting kids, helping kids graduate, making a difference in their lives. That's what it's really about in college athletics. I'm emotional. I didn't, didn't want to cry, but it's just who I am. Hopkins was thanking former UW Athletic Director Jen Cohen, who was present in the back of the room during the presser. Cohen is now with USC, but was responsible for hiring Hopkins while with Washington. The tournament uh, continues today with the second round, where Washington State takes on Stanford tonight at 6 o'clock. That's on the Pac-12 Network. Seattle Kraken will try to snap a two-game losing streak in NHL play tonight against Washington. The two teams drop the puck at Climate Pledge Arena. That's coming up at 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. West. Seahawks made a couple of free agency signings yesterday and lost an eventual Hall of Famer to Washington. Seattle signed safety Rayshon Jenkins from Jacksonville to a two-year $12 million contract. In addition, offensive tackle George Fant rejoins the team after spending time with Jets and Texans. He's expected to be back up to Abe Lucas and Charles Cross. Meanwhile, Bobby Wagner has reportedly agreed to a one-year deal to join the Washington Commanders this season. Well, the Mariners had an impressive Cactus League win yesterday over the Dodgers. Mitch Garver, J.P. Crawford, and Ty France all contributed in Seattle's 8-1 win over L.A. With the Angels last year at 304, led the American League in home runs with 44. The next pitch, swing and a drive, deep to right field. Going back, Hanniger looking up, a leap at the wall, and he makes the catch. Mitch Hanniger timing his leap at the top of the wall, 380 feet from home plate. Hanniger gets back in time. He's there, and that's out number two. And what a catch by Mitch. From the belt, here comes his pitch. Swung on, hit hard, past the diving shortstop, Betts into left field. Scoring Polanco right behind him. Here comes Garver. He's going to touch home. Ty France, a two-RBI single. The Mariners on the board, and they've taken the lead over the Dodgers. It's 2-0. Tell you more about it. The stretch and the pitch to Garber swinging a line drive down the left field line in there for a base hit all the way to the wall. Crawford will score. Julio running third. He'll score. Garber in at second base with a two run double. It's the Mariners four and the Dodgers one. Mitch Garber's second hit of the afternoon. He now has nine RBIs for the spring. Casey Lawrence earned the victory on the mound going three innings, allowing no runs, four hits, and a strikeout. Seattle was back in Peoria today to face Milwaukee. There was a limited schedule yesterday in prep sports. Let's take a look at some of the scores. Cashmere edged Liberty Bell in prep baseball 5-4, while Othello nipped Wenatchee by that same score. Ifreda home today against West Valley. That on the schedule. Prep fast pitch softball yesterday. Okanagan blanked OMAC 17 to nothing. The schedule today has OMAC visiting Oroville. Wenatchee's hosting Ellensburg in a twin bill. Uh, West Valley's at Ifreda. Eastmont hosting Cheney. Tanaska traveling to Chelan. The law, uh, lone soccer Soccer match last night had Chelan and Liberty Bell playing to a one-all tie. A busy schedule today has Cascade at Ellensburg. Brewster hosts Tenasket. Oroville visits Bridgeport. Manson hosts Okanagan. Afreda takes on Quincy in the Battle of the Basin. And Sela plays at Kashmir tonight. That is at 6 o'clock. That, my friends, is sports. Have a happy Thursday. Hello, television family. Dan Coombs host of Wake Up in Angie Valley. Tomorrow, Friday, is the 15th of March. The Ides of March. And then we go into the last weekend of winter, but as Grant has already explained to you, ain't going to feel like winter on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and then Monday, 
uh, we go back to work with gorgeous temperatures and the vernal equinox will be on Tuesday. Get your weekend going the first weekend of spring. Who's kidding who with Wake Up in Anchee Valley tomorrow morning live and local at 7 a.m. right here from Studio 7. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.